Hello everyone. I have two goals for today's video. The first is to give a high level introduction of a 3D modeling tool called Autodesk Format 360 Pro, which is part of the Autodesk AEC collection for 2017. I'm going to go in and I'm going to mock up some 3D geometry from scratch and add some materials to that. The second goal for today's video is to show how to take advantage of the data that you build in Format over in other Autodesk applications. The example I'm going to show today is InfraWorks 360. So I'm going to bring the Format data and take advantage of it in my InfraWorks 360 scene. Let's get started. So here I'm in a blank Format environment. I have a blank sketch here. Quick disclaimer, I am in the desktop version of Format 360. So there is also a cloud or browser based version of Format 360 Pro as well as a mobile app for Format. So you can use this on your mobile device as well. So to begin with, let's look at our view control. And I'm not going to go through this in detail. And I am not a solid modeling expert, which will be become apparent very quickly. But just to show you here, this is top view, where you can see your X and Y axis in red and green. 3D view, you can see your blue axis, which is your vertical axis. I'm going to start in top view. One thing I recommend is we're going to need later is to go ahead in the window pull down and turn on materials. We're going to need those in a bit. So I'm going to go to my draw tools. You can see I have some standard 2D sketching tools. I also have some primitive tools. And just to mention, you'll see your classical solid modeling tools such as extrude, sweep, union, join. Okay, I'm not going to go very deep into these, but uh, we're just going to mock up a quick little decorative wall. So I'm going to go to my 2D sketch command to the rectangle and notice I'm snapping to the grid, the XY grid. Again you can change these settings but we're not going to worry about that now. I'm just going to start at the origin and left click. I'm going to move my mouse out and you can zoom as you do this which is really nice with the wheel. You can pan with the right button. I'm going to go out about 20 feet and left click. Now it's looking for the width. Now I can of course keep snapping here, but if I would like to key in a precise measurement, I'm going to hit the tab key and it'll let me enter that. I'm going to do a six inch wall. Notice I could have put 0.5 or I can do the inch symbol and it will interpret that correctly. Escape, very important just as in AutoCAD, I need to hit the escape key. I'm going to move to a 3D view so we can start extruding this wall. Notice now I'm using my right button to orbit. You have an orbit button here as well and middle button to pan. Okay, you can see that vertical axis very clear now that I've orbited. Alright, let's get started. So I can select the vertexes in the corner, the edges, and the faces and manipulate those independently like you would expect in any good modeling software. I need to edit a face or extrude a face. I'm going to click the face, keep my cursor in the middle so that I'll see the blue, which tells me that I'm going to make a vertical edit or something in the Z direction. I'm going to drag and hold. Notice I'm starting to extrude this up. I'm going to hit the tab key so I can precisely enter my six foot dimension. So I want a six foot tall wall. Escape, which is very important to get out of the command. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of orbit around here to I'm in kind of a side view of the wall. And maybe I'll be a little more precise here. That's close enough. And now I'm just going to sketch in something decorative here. Just to show a couple more edits, I'm going to use a spline command. Again, this is not going to be anything artistic, but uh, I'm just, notice how I'm drawing on the face. You can see the blue, which lets me know that I'm in the Z plane on the face. So I'm going to click. I'm just going to kind of draw a spline through here. Maybe it's a company logo or something like that. And stop. Single left click and then escape two times. Let's offset this. I'm going to select now this edge. I'm going to right click. I have a shortcut menu for some of my modeling tools. I'm going to go to the offset edges. Notice it's letting me snap. It's in the correct plane. But I'm going to hit the tab key. 
I'm going to type in four inches. Okay. Escape. Now I'm going to select that edge and hit the delete key. I want to use my right button to orbit a bit. Select the face. Make sure I have the blue icon and I'm going to drag and move that to the left to knock the hole out. Okay. So there we go. Got my really nice decorative wall. So before we start uh, moving this data somewhere else, let's put some materials on that. So notice it's the second button here now, the materials. I have no materials in here yet. I could go to add materials and I could use texture maps or images and really control what this looks like. There's also a materials library, so I'm going to import from library. We have a catalog here. I'm going to go down to the concrete and let's try this non-uniform warm gray and hit OK. That drops it here. And before I start painting the wall with the material, I just want to show you a selection. You know, I showed how we can select edges and vertexes and faces all separately. We can make edits just like we can with uh, our other modeling tools such as AutoCAD and Venter. So that's normal. But if I need to select the entire object, I just simply double click anywhere on the object and I'll get the entire solid. Okay, so that's important to know when we start painting here, but I'll escape. And we're going to go back to our material, right click and paint with material. And I'm going to use my double click and escape to stop. So let's go back and right click on the material and edit. You can see here if I wanted to change the scale a little bit on the material. You see there I can make changes how I'd like to see that material. Go back and edit, change the color a bit. Maybe I want to lighten that up. Okay, there we go. So I can make a scene, I can make a little visualization. There's other visualization tools over here where you can make shadows and uh, make a fast rendering directly here in the tool. But we actually want to use this geometry. So I'm going to close the materials and I'm going to go up to File, Export, Locally, and I'm going to go All Objects. I'm going to do FBX and I'm going to leave the version as is and I'm going to click Export. I'm going to call this uh, wall. Fancy. And I'm going to save this on the desktop. And then the type is going to be FBX. FBX, uh, for those that are not familiar, most people are, but if you're not familiar, it's a great format to transfer data back and forth between a lot of the Autodesk vertical applications. So now we're into part two. We're done with the format, so we can move that. We're going to jump over to Autodesk InfraWorks 360, and I'm actually already in a scene here. So you can see I've got kind of a commercial site here mocked up. I have a Revit model placed in here. I've done some planters and got a new intersection here for this park. But I want to place this uh, maybe here near the entrance, maybe on this corner somewhere near these trees. My nice wall. So I'm going to go to the Data Connect or Data Sources button here, starting from the orange eye data sources and we're going to the first pull down to 3D model this is where we access our FBX format you can see other formats that we support because I'm connected to it now I need to configure it by double clicking and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that I have a imperial arbitrary coordinate system because it will convert and resize this if not this was done in feet the wall so I need this to be XY feet because remember, it's at the origin and format. I, there's no coordinates or anything like that. So I'm going to manually place the wall, but it still needs to know what units it is, which are feet. So I double click on XY feet. And here I'm going to go center 2D. You can use any of these placement tools. Center 2D works well. And I'm going to click interactive placement. placement. And I'll set the wall maybe here near the trees. Double click. One note, something that I generally would do that I did not do is to select city furniture here. Forgot to do that for type. Okay, got them ahead of, my, ahead of myself there a bit. One nice thing here is uh, after you select the object, you can go to 3D here to kind of see if this is going to work. And it'll also show you if you have any problems with your materials or if your orientation is wrong. Like if you were your wall was uh, laying flat in the XY plane, you could flip it. So you've got some adjustment options here if maybe whoever designed your object didn't get the axes just right.
So I'll close and refresh. And now let's zoom in and take a look at the wall. Okay, so you can see the materials, you can see the shadows because I've got, of course, sun and environment in the scene here. So again, this is a, this is a very, that was a very fast introduction to format. I just wanted to show how to get started, go mock up something quick, and how to get it over into the other applications. Hope this has been helpful. Have a great day.